Hello everyone. In this video, I scientifically test the sleep tracking accuracy of the Whoopstrap 3.0. In total, I tested it with a scientific EEG device for 11 nights. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. In this video, I will look at the sleep tracking accuracy of the WHOOP strap. Specifically, I will check if it can correctly predict the different sleep stages based on data I collected over the last six months. With that I mean, can it detect correctly when you're in deep sleep, light sleep and REM sleep? Additionally, I want to check if it can detect when you fall asleep at night and when you wake up in the morning, and also if it can detect the moment you wake up during the night. My channel is not so much about listing features. Instead, on my channel, I try to test the accuracy of different measurements. However, before getting to the test, let me explain the basics on how the whoop strap tracks your sleep. Specifically, how does your WHOOP strap detect your sleep stages? WHOOP uses the accelerometer, heart rate, heart rate variability and respiratory rate to give you your sleep stages. They actually partnered with a sleep center and had hundreds of people wear a scientific EEG device, also called polysomnography, while also wearing the WHOOP strap. Based on this data, they say that together with the University of Arizona, they built an algorithm that approximates the scientific sleep data using just the WHOOP strap. The question is now, of course, how accurate is this algorithm? That's what I will test in this video. For the sleep comparison, I tested the whoop strap for 41 nights. At the same time, I also wore this portable scientific EEG device and I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device measures brain waves and muscle movements and is being used by several of my colleagues in scientific studies. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. I also received my data from Whoop and converted this into a usable format. With the infrared recording, I can actually check what my movements were like and see if the Whoop strap correctly predicts when I'm awake. Now, let's review the results I obtained. Let's first have a look at the accuracy over five example nights to see what patterns we observe, after which I will do a statistical overview analysis. Here we see the first night I recorded. On top, you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. On the horizontal axis, we have the time of night. And as you can see, I went to bed around 11.30. And on the vertical axis, you have the different sleep stages. That being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. Now the sleep stages are plotted in the same order that are usually displayed in research. On the bottom, you can see a similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded using the whoop strap. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, which is marked here in purple, we see quite a good overlap between the whoop strap and the EEG device. The first and third deep sleep segments are slightly longer than the one tracked by the EEG device, but overall it's good. Additionally, the whoop strap detected some extra deep sleep later in the night. Next, let's look at REM sleep, which are marked here in red. Here we see again a pretty good match for most of the night. It picked up almost perfectly on all the segments, though it sometimes detected some extra REM sleep. Overall though, this is pretty good. Now to see the sleep cycles, I added non-REM sleep in blue and again marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep sleep and light sleep, together called non-REM, and always ends in REM. Overall, we can see the sleep cycles pretty well based on just the data from the WHOOP. Most of the sleep cycles match almost perfectly. Next, looking at the awake moments, we see that these are not that good for this night. The WHOOP strap did not pick up on the three awake moments I had, and it picked up on an extra awake moment that was not there. Finally, it was pretty good at detecting the moment I fell asleep this night and the moment I woke up, which is marked here in yellow-brown. Now, this is the second night I want to show you. Again, the deep sleep is almost perfectly detected. Only near the end of the night does the whoop strap pick up on some extra deep sleep. Again, most of the REM sleep I had was correctly detected. The whoop strap did detect a lot of extra REM sleep though. This also means we can see most of the sleep cycles. However, in the second quarter of the night, I would say it's a bit more difficult to see the different cycles because of the extra REM sleep detected. 
awake time marked here in green was okay for this night. It detected the longer awakening, but not the shorter one. The moment I fell asleep and the moment I woke up were detected quite well. Now the last three nights I just quickly want to share with you and just show you some of the highlights. Now this is the deep sleep for the third night and as you can see the accuracy was slightly worse for this night according to the whoop strap. It was close to detecting all three deep sleep segments, however it detected way more deep sleep overall. We see something similar for this night. All the deep sleep I had was detected, however a lot more was detected, especially near the end of the night. We also see for this final night that more deep sleep was detected near the end of the night. Now looking at REM sleep, we see a pretty good match for the third night, though again some extra REM sleep was detected. And this is a general pattern we see for most of the night. There is generally a good match, though sometimes some extra REM sleep is detected. Now awake moments are sometimes correctly detected, as we see here. And also here we can see that the awake moment was detected and no extra ones were detected. However, for example, for this night, it missed some of the awakenings and this awake moment was slightly shifted. Now in general, the moment I fell asleep and the moment I woke up were detected pretty okay, though sometimes they were slightly shifted. Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised with the sleep tracking of the whoop strap. The whoop strap generally picked up on deep sleep rather well, though it did detect some extra deep sleep. Additionally, it could detect REM sleep and thereby also the sleep stages. Though again, it sometimes detected some extra REM sleep. The whoop strap does seem to underestimate my awake moments. To get an even more objective view of the results, let's calculate some statistics regarding the consistency between the sleep stages of the whoop strap and the EEG device. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Enough self-promotion, let's see what the overview statistics say. First, let's look at the total percentage of each sleep stage, the EEG device on the left and the whoop stripe on the right detected. We see that the whoop strap predicts a little too much deep sleep, which is consistent with what we saw for the individual nights. It also predicts too much REM sleep, which we also suspected by looking at the individual nights. The total amount of awake time is not too bad, but it does predict way too little light sleep. More important even than these total percentages is checking if the whoop strap predicts the correct sleep stages at the right time. And that is what is displayed here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device and on the left the sleep stages according to the whoop strap. Each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the whoop strap. If we first look at deep sleep, we see that more than 75% of what was deep sleep was also predicted as deep sleep by the whoop strap. If it was mistaken, it generally confused deep sleep with light sleep. Light sleep was the worst of the sleep stages. This might in part be because the whoop strap does not predict enough light sleep, as we saw before. If light sleep was confused, it was mostly confused with deep sleep and REM sleep. REM sleep is mostly correctly predicted. In total, 67% of what was REM sleep was also predicted as being REM sleep by the whoop strap. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep. Finally, awake time was detected okay, though quite some of the awake moments were confused with light sleep. So this is all looking quite good for the whoop strap. It tracks most of the sleep stages correctly and was able to detect the sleep cycles I went through most of the time. It did struggle a bit with detecting light sleep and awake time correctly. Next, let's have a look at how accurate it is at detecting the moment I fell asleep and woke up. The University of Arizona Medical Center, which studied the whoop strap in collaboration with whoop, found that the whoop strap accurately detects sleep duration with a precision of 17.8 minutes. Let's see if this matches my findings. That is what I plotted here. On the vertical axis we have the dates of the nights that I tested the strap, and along the horizontal axis is the time difference between the whoop strap and the EEG device for waking up in yellow and for falling asleep in blue. So a positive number means it detected me as waking up or falling asleep later than I did in reality. And a negative number means that the whoop strap detected me as waking up or falling asleep earlier than I actually did. As you can see, the largest difference is 22 minutes, where it detected me waking up too early. But in general, the difference is just a few minutes maximum. So this is really good. There does seem to be a slight pattern where it detects me falling asleep slightly later than I actually did, since most of the blue points are to the right of the zero line. However, this is always just a few minutes. So in general, the whoop strap is still really accurate. 
So how does this compare to some of the best sleep trackers I've tested so far? And that is what I displayed here. On the top left, we have the results for the Whoop strap. On the top right are the results for the Fitbit Sense I tested recently. On the bottom left, the results for the Fitbit Inspire 2. And the bottom right shows the results for the Withing Sleep Analyzer, which you put under your mattress. Overall, the Whoop strap comes close to the accuracy of the Fitbit devices. Though I would still say that Fitbit devices in general perform slightly better. The Whoop strap seems to be basically on par with the Withing Sleep Analyzer. So this is all pretty good. Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised with how the Whoop strap performed. It predicted the correct sleep stages at the right time for the majority of the night. Additionally, it could detect the moment I woke up and fell asleep quite well and also allowed me to see most of my sleep cycles. It did struggle a bit with light sleep and awake moments, but overall it's not bad. So should you buy the Whoop strap? Well, I'm satisfied with its sleep tracking accuracy and also the heart rate tracking is decent as I showed in a recent video. So based on this, I would recommend the Whoop strap. For me, the major downside is that Whoop is a subscription service. You pay $30 per month for a minimum of six months for a strap and access to the app. Now this is quite a large amount of money. And once you stop paying, the strap itself becomes useless since you no longer have access to the app. You have to ask yourself if a one-time payment for a Garmin, Fitbit or Huawei watch might make more sense if you plan on using it for several years. I personally feel that 30 bucks a month is quite a lot of money, but for others it might be a very good deal. There is one frustrating and important thing I wanted to mention. I've been trying to make this and other videos on the Whoop strap for months now. However, for months this has been impossible since Whoop makes it very difficult to access your own data. I've been literally emailing with our customer service for five months trying to get the right data. However, generally their responses are very slow if I even get a response. Now, when I do get a response, they're very kind. However, I should have more easy access to my own data. Other companies can do it. For instance, Fitbit can do it, even Huawei can do it. So why can't Whoop? Finally, I should mention some of the limitations of the data that I showed here. First of all, I did not include the short disturbances in the graphs. So sometimes a short sleep disturbance might match with an awakening that I scored with the EEG device. Second, I just tested the device on me and it will be interesting to see how it performs on others. To do a full sleep comparison, it would be good to also test the strap against a full scientific polysomnography device. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and also consider watching some of my other videos.